So just real quick for Facebook Live, um, we're here at Jump On It Camp where we have a bunch of athletes in this really big room that they can't see on Facebook Live. But they're here to work on their jumps and technique um, from some of the best coaches in the world. And next to me, I have two of the best jumpers, um, Nathan Chen and Karen Chen. And I'm Sora, I'm from US Figure Skating, I do our social media. Um, so to get started, how are you guys doing? Great, yeah, I'm super excited to be here. Me too, I'm feeling great, and I'm really happy to be here. <laughs> So what have you guys been up to since World Team Trophy? Um, we've actually both been on the Stars on Ice tour. Um, basically that's it. I mean, we've been pretty busy since. We had um, a USOC thing a few, few weeks ago, basically, we were at, and yeah, that was it. I honestly have nothing to add more than that, so <laughs> yes. <laughs> and have you guys started preparations for next season yet? Sort of. I mean, we're starting to, I mean, that's the process of, you know, going into next season. Start planning programs, figuring out who you were, who we're going to work with for choreography, and you know, figure out music. So that's a that's part of the process. So before we look too far ahead, um, we you both had pretty crazy seasons, and the longest seasons you've ever had so far. Looking back now, what's been your favorite moment? I want to say my favorite moment was when I finished my clean short at U.S. Championships because the short has always been something that I struggled with and. I always put a lot of pressure on my short because I feel like you want to be in a good position going into the long. So, you know, it was a little bit of, it was a little tough for me and I was just really happy how I was able to pull together a clean short and skate my best. What about you, Nathan? Um, probably landing my triple axel in the long since, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> triple axel is clearly my favorite jump. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think that was really the biggest moment for me. Um, obviously, I landed like five quads in the long at nationals, so that was also, you know, a huge moment for me. Um, I really prepped for that this past season, you know, to be able to have that um, happen at nationals is big, so I'm really happy about that. So speaking of those five quads, um, after you landed those at US Championships and Four Continents, you then attempted six at World Championships. Um, and can you talk a little bit about why you wanted to add that six quad and continue to challenge yourself? Yeah, I mean, I always just want to push myself technically, you know. It's something that I knew I was capable of doing, and it's something that I just wanted to, you know, try to prove to myself that I was capable of doing. Um, it didn't work exactly the way I wanted it to, but, you know, I just, I, I knew that, you know, you always have to take risks. You always have to, um, you know, put yourself in uncomfortable situations so that you can eventually succeed. So that's kind of where my mind was going before the Long at Worlds. Do you ever get scared heading into the quad? Oh, definitely. I mean, that's part of, that's like half of it. Like half of like the first quad toe I did, I was at Lake Arrowhead and we don't have boards in that rink and I went to the toe and it just like went full speed, didn't know what I was doing and like did like uh, like three and a half turns and landed four and just slammed into the into the boardless yeah. rink. But yeah, so anyways, so that was like the first time. It took me like, you know, two years after that to really like get over the fear of doing it. But once you, once I was able to do that, it happened really quickly. Awesome. And then for Karen, you also went to your first world championships. Um, and then heading into your free skate, having an idea of how the rest of the field had skated and what was ahead of you with the pressure of bringing back three Olympic spots, um, how did you handle that and how did you kind of approach that situation? Honestly, after I skated my short, I felt relieved because, like I said before, the short was something I struggled with, so I was very excited to do my long. But, you know, I definitely felt a lot of pressure because I did want, we wanted to bring back three spots for Olympics and I felt like that was very important. And knowing that, you know, things weren't going so well and that I really needed to skate a clean long, there was definitely an additional amount of pressure. But I feel like I was able to block it off and really focus on taking one element at a time and staying really focused and just somehow pull things together. And then for Nathan, it was also your first world. So it was your longest season. How did you handle the extra length of the season? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely something new, a new experience for me. Um, it was a really fun season though, I mean I got a lot of new experiences that I've never had before um, and again going to Worlds is something that I've really dreamed about for a long long time and you know to finally have that happen uh, was, was you know super reassuring and even though it was a long season it was still like a really fun one and I'm really happy about it. Yeah, um, and to get to those World Championships you both had ups and downs throughout your careers, um, it's not just a straight shot to the top. Um, to win the title. And for Karen, you had some early obstacles to overcome, like at Salt Lake City US Championships, yes. um, winning your intermediate title. Do you want to talk about that experience a little? Yeah, of course. This is when Junior Nationals was still a thing, and that's when you still <laughs> had to qualify in order to compete your short and your long. And I remember skating a disastrous long and just sitting in the stands watching my name go down lower and lower and lower, and finally hit 10th place, and I knew it wasn't going to go down any lower, and I knew I made it. 
And so somehow, I, it felt really good to know I finally made it, but at the same time, I was like, wow, I really have to step it up and not let that disaster happen again. So I just had to clear my mind and just focus on what I had to do, and I skated clean short and clean long and won the title, and it was a very good experience for me. Yeah, you came away with the title, so. Yeah. <laughs> and speaking of Salt Lake City, Nathan, you grew up in Salt Lake City. It's an Olympic host city. How did that affect your Olympic dreams, and how did that impact your childhood growing up? Yeah, I mean, I grew up in Salt Lake City. Um, 2002 Olympics, like you said, were in Salt Lake City. Um, and to be able to be, you know, raised in an area where the Olympics were like, you know, such an impactful thing um, really, you know, helped me as a skater grow. And um, I remember, you know, training at Steiner's in Salt Lake City with, you know, Apollo's face right on the wall and um, the Olympic rings right next to you. And then also, you know, driving to the rink, I passed the Olympic torch. So to see that and, you know, just to be in, in an Olympic environment is just like something that, you know, was super beneficial to me and just an amazing experience. And with your childhood and your whole career now leading up to this point, um, who's been your greatest support system for both of you? Um, definitely my family and my mom. You know, like without them, I never really would have gotten where I am now. Um, I remember, you know, her driving me to the rink everywhere, you know, taking me to, you know, ballet class, gymnastics, everywhere. Just, you know, without her, it would not have been possible. Um, and even like just when I was a younger kid and her taking me to the rink every day, she really helped me find my passion for skating, um, you know, made it really fun for me. I mean, I was three years old, four years old at the time, I would have gotten so bored with it so quickly. So, I mean, I'm glad that, you know, she was able to do that, you know, make little games and, you know, just make skating really fun for me at such a young age, and I think that really, you know, picked me, picked me up to where I am now. Thank you, Karen. Um, the same, I feel like my family um, is my support group, and they're more than that, and I really appreciate everything they do for me, and, you know, I've been through so many obstacles with so many injuries, and they were there for me through all those tough times, and helped me, you know, go find the right doctor that could help fix them, go find the right physical therapist to help me fix whatever's bothering me, and I really appreciate it, and I couldn't be here without them. And Karen, there's somebody else in your support system, um, it's a pretty familiar name, you guys might know her, Christiane Gucci. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your relationship with her? Yes, um, Chrissy Amaguchi is more than a role model to me. She's an inspiration and in general I look up to her more than, not just as a skater but as a person as well because she's so giving and caring and generous and that's something that I really admire in her and I'm just so thankful to have her, I guess, help me and assist me and guide me. How did you guys first meet? I think I first met her at my home rink in Fremont and I remember just being extremely nervous and you know it's Christy Yamaguchi, how can you not be nervous when you see her? She's amazing, so yeah. And is there any piece of advice that she's given you that you will take with you into the Olympic season? Yes, for me, she told me this really recently, this was before Worlds, she told me to skate dumb and I feel like it's something really funny but at the same time it works because as for me as a skater, I feel like when I'm skating, I tend to overthink things and I tend to just let my m mind wander and race, when I'm, especially when I'm competing. So to just kind of let that just let that all go and just let my body do its job and let things happen. So heading into the Olympic season now, what would it make, uh, what would it mean to you to make the Olympic team in a year? I mean, it would obviously be a dream come true. Um, it's like I said, you know, I was growing, I grew up in Salt Lake City around the Olympics, and that really, you know, pushed my career to where it is now. And just to be able to make the Olympic team would definitely be something that, you know, is a huge accomplishment in my life, and something that's really reassuring to all the work and all the hours and time that I spent on the ice. Karen, it's exactly the same for me. It's something that I've always dreamed about, and something that I really want. And I feel like. I have to be not afraid to go for it, and I really want it to happen. Can you remember the first Olympics uh, you ever watched, or your first Olympic memory? Um, I remember watching um, Evgeny Pashenko, actually 2002 Olympics, um, and Alexei Gudin, like basically battle that out first, and I thought that was like super cool, and I watched their quads, and I was super into their quads, I really didn't care about anything else. Um, but yeah, I thought that that was really cool, and I wanted to you know, do that myself and mimic that, and I think that was like my first real um, Olympic memory. For me, it was watching Michelle Kwan, but I do remember watching Pushenko skate his free skate over and over again because my brother was a huge fan of him and he would just watch him over and over and over, and so it's just so inspirational. And long before you even won your U.S. title, you had to receive your first Team USA jacket. 
Do you guys remember how you felt when you got, got that jacket and put it on? Yeah, that jacket was amazing. <laughs> I remember I was at um, Lake Arrowhead again, and I was going to the gym, and I got it. it the package came to the um, to, to the to the rink that I was at, and I like quickly put it on, and, like ran down. I was like so excited, and I like was like, "Mom, take a picture of this. Send it to my sister. Like this is so cool." And I was like, I was like super excited about it, and it was like I just felt so proud wearing it. It's exactly the same for me. I remember being very excited, and this was when it was like really bright too. It was like the red, white, and blue, and I remember. You know, I'm not a fan of wearing color, I usually just wear black, but I was so excited about to wear that jacket, and so I wore it literally every single day and wherever I went. Do you remember what year you received it? Um, I think when I was 13 or 14, I can't remember. What about you, Nathan? Uh, I think it was like 2013 as well. It was like before my first international, like, Guardian or something. And then even U.S. champions and Olympic hopefuls have embarrassing moments on the ice. It's like it's happened. <laughs> so what would you say has been the most embarrassing moment for you? I thought of one right away. This was at <laughs> Glacier Falls, and I remember skating a clean long, and I was so happy, and I was doing my layback spin, and I was doing the Beelman, and right before the music ended, I somehow slipped backwards, and I just landed on my butt, and it was so embarrassing. The music ended, and I didn't know what to do, so I just stood up and hit my ending pose, but, you know, I think I got a deduction for that. <laughs> Okay, it happens. What about you, Nathan? Uh, I mean, I'm sure I have some that I've like blocked out in the back of my head. <laughs> Who hasn't? But I think basically it's just like the most the thing that pops in my head is like running onto the ice like full speed with your guards on, just oh, like yeah. eating it. Oh, yeah. So that's probably it. Yeah, pretty painful. Um, and now to prevent those embarrassing moments from happening, do you guys have any superstitions or pre-competition rituals that you always go to? Um, for me, I always wear my J necklace, but I also like to put on my left skate and then put on my right skate and then retie it. I don't know why, but I just do it. <laughs> yeah, I do the same thing, but I do left, right, but besides that, nothing. <laughs> I mean, clearly it works. Um, and now, <laughs> now to look way ahead, um, what do you want to do after skating? Not that anyone here wants that to happen yet. <laughs> um, I mean, I, education is super important in my family, and it's something that uh, my mom and my dad definitely, you know, really see for me and, you know, they require at least, you know, a college graduate. Um, but basically, I think after, after skating, um, or at least after 2018, I'll go to a four-year university and see where that goes. <laughs> <laughs> As for me, I'm hoping to get involved in the medical field just because that I've dealt with so many injuries and I've really learned to appreciate what they do and I think it's very cool and it's something worth trying. And Nathan, what would you want to study? Same. Sorry, it's super stereotypical. <laughs> I'm sorry. But anyways, yeah, probably medical. It's something like that. Um, do you guys know what schools you'll be looking at yet? Um, it kind of depends. I mean, if I'm you know, going through 2022, I want to find something close to California where I'm training, so like UC Irvine. If not, maybe you know, some, like, uh, something like Johns Hopkins or an Ivy or something. We'll see. <laughs> I definitely would like to stay in California because I'm a Cali girl, I love the weather, I don't think I could deal with any other type of weather, so definitely something in California. And then also away from the ice, Nathan, you play guitar, Aaron, you paint. Um, why are these hobbies so important to you to have some balance and have something away from the ice? I mean, you basically answered that in the question. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, just something having, definitely having something off of the ice where you know you can take your mind off of skating, have fun, just not really enjoy, uh, not really care about anything and just enjoy it. Um, and I think that's really what you know I do with my guitar. Uh, my brother actually plays guitar, so I picked it up because of him. And you know, sometimes I'm jamming out with him, so it's just something that I like to do for fun. How long have you played? Um, I played guitar for like two years, but played piano for since I was like five. And then after that, I moved to California and couldn't bring my piano with me, so. Uh, I got a uh, violin and then hated that, <laughs> so then went to a guitar. Okay, what about painting for you? Um, painting is something that I really enjoy doing and I feel like it's kind of like a stress reliever for me and it's something to just take my mind off of skating and school and just be relaxed. And what do you like to paint and how often do you get to do it? Um, I usually like to do something nature-based, um, but you know, I've been really busy and it's something that I wish I incorporate back into my routine, I guess. <laughs> Is there anything else you guys like to do away from the ice, aside from guitar and paint? Netflix. <laughs> true. YouTube. <laughs> um, and then you guys both participated in the first Jump On a Camp last year. Can you guys talk about your experience a little bit and what the athletes here have to look forward to in the next couple of days? 
Yeah, so I was a team leader last time. Oh, that was loud. <laughs> uh, I was a team leader last year, and it was really cool to be part of the first jump on a camp. Um, I remember, you know, one of the girls in my in my group was actually start, is training with us now. So it's really cool that this camp, you know, opens a lot of doors for athletes like you guys. Um, and it's something that, you know, you guys, I wish that I had this experience when I was younger to be able to, you know, work with all these great coaches and meet all these people. And like a big part of figure skating is definitely meeting all these people and making friends. So I think that's, you know, really great about this camp. Karen, how was your experience last year? Yes, last year I was a demonstrator, so I kind of got to see and work with everyone and I felt like it was great and inspirational for me as well to just kind of see all the skaters out there and see how far they've come and how far they will go and I think it's such a great opportunity experience for all of us. What was your favorite part? <laughs> hmm. No, I mean it was, it was just really fun to be able to, you know, um, guide everyone around and, you know, kind of feel like I was part of the camp. <laughs> Okay, so some rapid fire questions about jumps. What was the hardest jump for you to land? Axel. Okay. <laughs> uh, flip. How long did it take you? Um, took me like three years to land the boxel. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of how long, but I just know flip has been something that I kind of abhor and I hate doing it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when you were first learning all your singles, which jump were you most excited to learn? Um, probably single axle, ironically. <laughs> probably single lutz because I have a natural thing for the outside edge. And what's your favorite jump? Uh, quad toe. Triple lutz. Um, your least favorite jump? I think I already know your answers, but... I wonder what it is! <laughs> <laughs> you can say it again. <laughs> <laughs> and to wrap things up, what is your favorite thing about jumping? Not falling. Well, that's it. Thank you guys so much, and thank you to everyone at Facebook Live for joining in. See you next time.